welcome to Plover Whiting Elementary School. I'm Angela Hintz, the school principal. Hi, my name is Colleen DeMarco, and I am one of the teachers at Plover Whiting Elementary. My job today is to tell you about what a typical day in kindergarten might be like. Children all arrive at 835. That's when the first bell comes, and that's when they come in. Do not bring them before 820. There is no adults outside until that time. At 9 o'clock, we're going to start something called Number Corner. So during this Number Corner, or calendar time, we are working on all sorts of different math concepts. We'll also be working on some sight words and letter ID. That that is how we start off our day. At around 10 o'clock, we will be doing Center Time. This is a time when the kindergarten classes break into smaller groups so we can give more individualized attention and direction to those students. So when it's not a pandemic, we really love having parents and grandparents come in. After that, it's time for lunch. So kindergarten goes to lunch at 11.10. Again, during non-pandemic times, you can come and have lunch with your child too. At 12.10, We'll come in from recess and we'll have a quiet time. We believe we need to have that rest time. We are working really hard and we work a whole day. So please know that that quiet time is so important. After that, my class, and I know Mrs. Fugina's class does daily news. Daily news is a great time for our children to work on their writing. So together, we will write a sentence together every day. After that, it's time, time for encore, or sometimes they're called maple classes. That's gym, music, library, and art. So in a six day period, we will have gym twice, we'll have music twice, we'll have library once, and we'll have art one time. Each kindergarten teacher will send a schedule so that you know when they should be wearing their tennis shoes or when they should maybe not be wearing their best dress because it's art day and you don't want to get paint on it. After Encore, we'll have snack and we usually have a read aloud at that time too. At the end of the day, right around two o'clock, we will be doing language arts. Now, that can look very different. At the beginning of the year, we're probably reading a story and we're probably working on comprehension of that story. By the end of the year, we're working a lot more on our writing skills. And at the end of the day, we will have math. And we're working on a lot of those concepts that we worked on before up in the number corner time. At the end of the day, at 3.45, that's our dismissal. So that's the time that the children will be getting ready to go home. You will be picking them up. They will be riding the bus home. So that is a typical day in kindergarten. Hi, my name is Carrie Fugina. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers here at Plover Whiting. I'd like to welcome you to Plover Whiting. It's exciting to have your kindergartner come here for the first time. But I'm here today to talk about kindergarten supplies. And it's so fun at the beginning of the year to get those kindergarten supplies. There are so many choices in the stores, so many things to look at, and you might be a little bit overwhelmed. But I'm here to tell you some of the pointers and things we've found over the years to make your child most successful with their materials. One concern that some kindergarten parents have with the long supply list, what should they pick out? What is best for their child? Should they pick something their child um, likes or that's fancy? You don't need to worry about all of that. Basic supplies are the best. They seem to work the best. They're usually the least expensive. Another concern is that we ask for certain brands on certain things. That's not to make your life more difficult. It's that certain name brands seem to be what work best for your child. As you're shopping, um, consider buying multiples of certain things too because we will ask mid-year for you to replace things that are worn out or gone or lost, used up. So you'll get the best price and you'll automatically have that at home. The most important thing for kindergarten is the rest mat. Um, we found that the small, thin, um, basic red and blue one is the one that we want here at Kindergarten at Plover Whiting. Stores sell out of them quite fast. If you're looking at school supplies, make sure that you get secure one of these. Or wait until stores uh, resupply them 
or online typically has them too. Once again, the red and the blue one. The other one that seems to be popular that you'll find is the blue and green one. I put a do not want this one on this one because it's thick, it takes up way too much room. We just don't have that kind of room in our kindergarten classrooms. So although it looks comfy and you might want your child to be super comfortable, our nap times aren't that long. To go along with the rest mat, your child will want a little cover up. What I have here is one of those really cheap, thin, inexpensive kind of beach towels. This is what we're asking for. It's long enough to cover your child up, not too thick because we then again we don't have a place to store these not a lot so your child if they have this thin blue beach towel they will be able to fit it in the spot that we have for them another item that we ask for is a folder to take papers back and forth um, between you as a parent and us as a teacher we like the thicker plastic ones um, you might be looking at different ones and seeing this one's a thinner plastic that works okay too, but the thicker plastic is gonna last you all year. Or have a thinner plastic one that you have multiples that we can um, change them out so your child always has the organization that they need. We do ask for a binder, and this we ask for a black one. There again, they come in different qualities. If you're able to buy a little bit better quality one, it will last longer. We use the binder every single day of the kindergarten year um, for our math program. Um, some of them have uh, the, like a plastic um, pocket on the front. Those typically seem to be the better quality ones. So if you can find a black one inch um, binder, that is what we'll need for your child's math. Watercolors, this is a favorite of kindergartners. We do have a preference on these too. The watercolors that typically come from a, a budget store don't have a lot of um, color to them and they get used up quickly. So you might wanna spend just a few cents extra and get something that's a little bit better quality. This is the size that really works best for kindergartners. Pencils, a kindergarten staple. We found that there's certain pencils that work best too. There's cute character pencils out there or they have the little wraps on them that kids love. And those are the ones that your child will pick. They really don't work well for kindergarten because when we go to resharpen them, they don't sharpen well. We end up wasting a lot of pencils. So the pencils that are a little bit better quality are the solid wood pencils. And those will all need to be sharpened upon the first day. Crayons. This is one that we feel strongly as kindergarten teachers who've had a lot of experience that Crayola is your best bet. Some of the other crayons are solid wax, don't have a lot of color in them. So when your child colors, they don't have nice vibrant color and some children just don't have the, the grasp or the strength to color well yet and so they don't have as much success. So please pick up a couple of Crayola boxes of crayon. Dry erase markers. The Expo markers seem to be the best brand um, for what we do here and solid black um, will be just fine. We do use the thick ones and the thin line ones and so those would be um, good to pick up a couple of packages of those. Expo brand, the Crayola brand do not work for us so um, Crayola dry erase are ones to avoid. Over the head headphones these um, have come in really handy this year with e-learning with their Chromebooks and we will continue to use them as years go on. Pick up a good quality head um, set. Dollar store ones aren't going to last very long and um, although they cost a little bit more, you'll want to have them because these will get passed on to first grade, first grade will pass on to second grade and so on. So these will go up through the grades so buy a a good quality pair of headphones that can be in a bag with your child's name on it. Another thing that can be in a bag with your child's name on it is an extra set of clothes. At kindergarten we often have milk spills, sometimes we have a little accident, and if it's a rainy day, the puddles get us. We just can't stay out of the water, it seems. You'll want to have just a basic pair of sweatpants, 
something with a stretchy waist because your child will be growing. So what you send in September might not fit them in December. So a basic pair of sweats that's a little bit big might last them for most of the year. Um, we can have you send in new clothes too if, if your child is growing a lot. Basic t-shirt, same thing. It'll work for all seasons, send it in a little bit big, and then you'll wanna have a pair of socks and a pair of under clothing as well. So just put those in a bag with your child's name on and they'll be all set for any little accidents or things that we have pop up that they'll need to stay dry for. A paint shirt. Um, art class and in the classroom we do a lot of arts and crafts and what we have found is the t-shirt just doesn't work for a kindergartner. It goes over their head, they get paint on it, they take it off, they've got paint on their hair, on their clothes. It's just not something that works well. So what I might suggest, this is a used one, actually it was my own children's and they decorated it so it has quite a bit of paint on it, it's well loved, um, is an adult shirt that's a button down shirt. So once again, we don't mean for this to be a hardship on you. We know the list is so long. We have so many things that we do here at school that we just want to have fun and be able to work with your child and have them have the materials that they need and that work best. So if you have any questions concerning school supplies, please go ahead and reach out to a kindergarten teacher and we can um, suggest what works best or help guide you and where you might find your materials. So um, I just want to wish you um, well as you become a Plover Whiting Wildcat and welcome you to our school. My name is Leanne Kurtza and I'm so happy to meet with you today and welcome your families to our Plover Whiting School. Um, that's probably one of the best part of our jobs is getting a new batch of kindergartners who are excited about their new learning adventure. The other part that I wanted to do is make sure um, to welcome you to our partnership. We really see a relationship with you as a partnership and there's a lot of exciting things that are going to happen this year and we're so happy to embark on that journey together. So today what I wanted to chat with you about are um, ideas and things to suggest that might make the transition to kindergarten a little easier so what I would like to do is just give a few of those suggestions and I apologize if these seem like simple ideas. Um, a lot of times for parents because they're not in a school environment it's a oh I didn't think about that and for a lot of you um, this is old hat and you know the routine and the drill um, so thank you for being patient with the conversation um, but we just have some things that we think might make it easier for your child to be independent and have that self-concept and good feeling that they can be successful in their own way. So the big thing that I want to make sure that I emphasize is that our kindergarten team, our wonderful group of paraprofessionals, we're always here to help your kindergarten child in any way. Um, so please don't think that we're not here and so the things that I tell you about might sound, wow, they want them to do everything. No, we just want to encourage growth and independence so that they feel comfortable and they don't have to wait. Oftentimes the situation is one teacher and 20 children and of course we can't help them all at one time. So the first thing I wanted to just chat about was clothing. Um, the first thing you might want to think about is try to label as many items as you can. Um, in the winter, almost every kindergarten student has black snow pants. And so when you hold them up, the children are like, that's not mine. And so if you can label things, you will be much happier because you won't have to buy new snow pants in the middle of winter because the teacher can help identify whose is whose. So labeling, you know, their coats, it's really helpful just because um, we can help find lost items easier. The other thing we want you to consider um, with the clothing is think of clothing for your child when they start kindergarten in terms of function, ease, um, comfort. Um, we do a lot of projects here in kindergarten that might be a little bit messy and we try to keep them clean and they have a paint smack. But because we have so much fun and we're interactive with our activities, um, sometimes there are accidents and spills. And so maybe not send them in that beautiful Sunday dress um, unless you are prepared that 
there could be some things that happen. Um, also, just we want the children to be able to be independent. And so, like with the jacket, when you're considering, we don't want you to go out and buy a whole new wardrobe, but if you're purchasing some things, make sure it's a zipper that your child can handle. Um, again, we're here to help, but every time you give your child a chance to be independent, they feel important and special, and they get to move on to that next activity a little quicker, um, especially if it's recess, because they get pretty excited about that. And the same with like when you're picking up boots for your child. Here's a pair of boots that are tie boots. Um, if your child isn't really good at lacing or tight, you know, tightening up or even tying their own bows yet, then this might not be the best choice for this year until they become a little more independent, perhaps a more slip-on boot with Velcro. And the same is true of shoes. If you're picking up tennis shoes for your kindergarten student, maybe if they're still learning to tie, maybe a Velcro shoe is the way to go um, versus the tie shoe. Um, learning to tie a shoe is very developmental and can be frustrating for a kindergartner when they want to move on to the next thing. We're here to help, but again, they have to wait. And so some of them um, like the Velcro shoes because it makes them more independent. That doesn't mean we don't want them to learn how to tie a shoe. Um, and that is a skill that's hard for us as kindergarten teachers to teach here one-on-one. -on -one. So it's something they can still be working on at home, um, but gradually transition to that time. The other thing I wanted to mention was think about their clothing in terms of the weather. They go out for recess every single day, unless it's raining or the wind chill is below zero. So we really want you to prepare your child with the proper clothing so that they can enjoy that recess time. That is such an important time for their social, their emotional, their time to just unwind. And so they are going to enjoy that experience outside unless they are dressed warm. So of course, I sh well, that's for winter and cool in the summer. Um, but, and also think about playground equipment, you know, are the flip flaps the best shoe to wear as they're climbing on the jungle gym? Um, in the winter time, hat, you know, scarf, mittens, snow pants, jacket, boots. Um, it all sounds basic, um, but it's easy to forget those things and that time is not comfortable and fun for your student if they don't have what they need. The next thing I wanted to talk about in terms of independence and helping your child get ready for the transition is the lunchtime part of the day. Um, lunch is an exciting part. It's a social time for kids. It's a time to refuel their bodies. But it can also be a stressor for some kids because, excuse me, of the environment. It's a lot more kids, it's busy, it's a little noisy, and so sometimes they feel a little intimidated in the lunchroom. So we ask, if it's a hot lunch, we as teachers will help train all the children in the process of going through the lunch line. If it's a cold lunch, we ask you just to think about your child's independence once again with what you're packing in terms of packaging. Um, you know, just take a little time to help your child figure out how to put the straw in the juice box successfully on their own. Or is it a container that you're sending of a food item that there's no way that they can open it by themselves? Again, we always have staff in the lunchroom to help, but sometimes your child may feel too shy to raise their hand or it just, they have to wait so long. Their lunch time is an adequate amount of time to eat, um, but with talking and gabbing and then their interest in getting outside for recess, it ends up being a short amount of time. Um, and so we want them to you know, be successful, get right to their lunch, and feel those bodies for the afternoon. So again, just think about packaging and what they have. Um, I know when my kids, who are all grown up now, um, went to school, I just spent some time, you know, kind of talking about what the day might look like with them, and talking through, kind of doing a little pseudo lunch, and what do you do with your things when you're done eating? You know, throw them in the garbage, or bring the garbage home just anything that empowers your child to feel confident and independent. Um, the next thing I thought I would just mention is name writing. 
in kindergarten, one of the things we do from day one is a lot of labeling. And so if they could come knowing how to write their name, that would be a great asset for them. They're going to be labeling things that also need to recognize their name so they can go and find things that are labeled with their name on it. We don't expect their name to be perfectly written. A lot of children start learning to write their name with all capital letters, and that's totally appropriate. Um, know that as we progress through the year, we'll eventually transition to a capital first letter and then lowercase letters. But any way they can write their name is helpful. The thing I was going to just touch on is so many times parents ask, what do I need to do to get my student ready for kindergarten? What kind of skills should they have in place? And we're here to tell you that we welcome all children of different levels. Um, the academic levels and skills we teach in kindergarten are very developmental, just like when they learned how to crawl and walk. It just happens when they're ready and when they're given experiences and exposure. And so please know that we will continue to work with you and give you ideas about how to continue from where they're at. Um, but one of the best things that parents can do is really reading. Um, reading encompasses so many things, um, getting them to enrich their vocabulary, giving them um, exposure to experiences and knowledge about the world around them. And it's also a wonderful bonding time between you and your child. And so giving them lots of opportunities to hear stories and look at books would be something that I would suggest. And um, establishing that routine every day, like sometimes it's a nighttime routine. If nighttime is too late and it doesn't work, um, then find another time that book reading becomes a part of your family day. Um, children look forward to it and it is so amazing how much vocabulary actually is built um, through that experience. So that would be like the one big thing we would continue to encourage, um, which you hear about all the time. The other thing um, that we as kindergarten teachers often say is just immerse your student in conversation, in day-to-day -day activities. It doesn't always have to be like workbooks you're working on to develop certain skills, but giving them opportunities through day-to-day -day -day interactions. If you're going to the grocery store you know, and you're picking out fruits and vegetables, talk with your child about the names of them. Maybe explore um, some new vegetables and fruits or just look at them while you're there and help them learn the names of ones maybe your family doesn't regularly buy. Look at the scale that's hanging there in the vegetable produce department. Show them how it works to put those fruits and vegetables in, weigh them, and the, how the numbers show you how much, you'll, um, how much they weigh and how much you'll pay. Those are all things that help to bring that world in focus for them. And it helps them get excited about the things we're teaching them because they have a platform to apply them in. So those are some really important things, going to the post office, if any of you do that anymore, um, taking them, like I said, to the grocery store, um, just things at home that you might be doing. Talking through your routine helps them to learn how to problem solve and the purpose for what you're doing. When we, we as parents who our kids are grown up, we often say that just use that time while you're riding in a car. Um, do some counting, um, point out signs that are out there so they're starting to see letters on signs and that, that those words on signs help to tell you information so they understand the purpose of learning letters and sounds and reading words. So again, just immersing them in your world the best that you can and talking with them. And the last thing I guess I wanted to mention is just empowering your kindergarten student to learn to be a problem solver. Um, we're going to be using that word a lot when they come to school, and we want them to think about, you know, they've been in a, in a situation often where they are looking to their adults for direction. Once they get to school, they have opportunities to make a lot of decisions, and sometimes it can be overwhelming but we want them to have some experience with when you know the juice spills on the floor, not a big deal. 
ask them to get the paper towel to wipe it up. Um, start transitioning them into empowering them to take care of situations. Talk through racist situations. If this happens, if someone is unkind to you, how, how can you, you know, work with that? And get them to use their words and communicate with others in a kind way. So those are just some basic to, um, things to help make a good transition. And we are so excited. The last thing I want to leave you with, um, I know I've talked a lot, and thank you for your patience. If you have a chance to Google this book, or I'm not sure if it's recorded on YouTube, um, but this is one of my favorite stories, and I'm not going to read it to you. Um, but I think it's more for a parent than it is a, the student. Um, this is a book called It's Going to Be Perfect. And in this story, they go through all the stages of life from the time you were first pregnant with your child or um, received your child, all the way through each stage um, of their development. And I love this story because it talks about the bumps in the road and things that didn't go perfect, but then it always ends with, but what would I have done with, without someone to look at the beautiful sunrise each morning um, when you were up all night? Who else would I have looked at that sunrise with? And so the whole gist of the story is perspective. There are going to be bumps in the road and things that don't go perfect, but those imperfections, those bumps in the road, are really times great learning opportunities, and it's all how we look at it. So know that we're here as a partnership, and when your child is having any of those bumps in the road, um, we're here to help you with those. So thank you for bearing with me. And again, we're excited. Hi, my name is Kathy Reynolds. I'm the school nurse coordinator for the Stevens Point Area School District. I, along with my school nurse colleagues, are here to welcome you, kindergartners, parents and guardians, to kindergarten. But before I start, I'd like to introduce my school nurse team, starting with... Hi, I'm Nurse Sarah. I'm Nurse Berta. I'm Julie. I'm Nurse Julie. All of us are here again to, to welcome you to kindergarten. Parents, whether this is your first child coming to kindergarten or if it's your last child coming to kindergarten, every child experiences kindergarten differently. So we're here today just to provide you with some brief reminders and some recommendations that we hope will help your child have a happy and healthy kindergarten experience. Sarah, how often will the school nurse be at elementary school? Good question. So our school nurse team um, goes all over the district and from elementary standpoint, our nurses are there for a few hours on about two days a week. Um, so who is there, Berta, to provide for student health care when the nurse isn't there? We understand that your children's health is important to you and it's very important to us as well. So the office staff in the schools is trained by us to take care of your children for any um, first aid needs and to pass out medications to them as needed throughout the school day. Nurse Julie, who is available to care? Um, Nurse Julie, is there a place where children can lie down if they're not feeling well? So each school usually has about one cot for students. That doesn't allow a whole ton of students to be in there at one time. However, if your student is injured or ill, we will contact the parents to come and get them for the day. Uh, we expect you to respond as soon as possible, but we understand that you're busy throughout the day as well. Um, however, the health room is not set up to be an all-day um, recuperation place for these students. So, Kathy, what happens if a parent is unable to come pick up their student? Well, parents, if you're not available, the school secretary will look at who you've listed as responsible people, people that you've given permission to, to pick up your child. So it's really important that that contact information be correct and up to date. And just remember that if Grandma Kathy's on the contact list, you better let Grandma Kathy know. Surprises are not a good thing. And Sarah, what about children with health conditions? Yes, so parents, if your student has a health condition that could limit their ability to learn or be in school, um, we want you to let your, your student's school know. Let the office know and the office will reach out to the school nurse 
and then we will in turn reach out back to you to find out more information about that health condition, whether it's seizures, diabetes, um, asthma, allergies, vision or hearing deficit, those types of things. So um, we will be reaching out to you after you notify the school of that condition. Um, Berta, what about children that need medications at school? According to the district policy, we, it's the preference that the medications be given at home prior to the child coming to school. However, we understand that that's not always possible. So if prescription or over-the-counter medications need to be taken at school, we have forms that need to be completed and brought in with that medication to school. Those forms are available on the school district website as well as in the office at each and every school. Nurse Julie, uh, what immunizations are required? So the Wisconsin Student Immunization Law requires students to have a minimum number of doses of each vaccine. We would have you talk to your health care provider um, to see, or the local health department to see what vaccines that your student needs to either receive or if they're up to date. Uh, we do recommend that your student receives any of these vaccines prior to the first day of school. The summer is actually a really good time for students to go see their um, provider to do any sort of checkup, whether that's vision, hearing, um, dental work, just to address any issues prior to the start of the school year. Sarah, Nurse Sarah, what other tips are helpful before children start kindergarten? A couple weeks prior to school starting in the fall, it'd be great and really helpful to get your child on a, a bedtime routine, um, setting them up for at a certain time each evening to kind of wind down and go to bed. This can really help them be prepared for those long work, work days at school um, in the coming months. So that's really important because they need that energy to learn and play while they're at school. So sleep is of the utmost importance. Um, Julie, how important is breakfast if, before children start each school day? So I understand that not everyone is going to eat going to eat a hearty breakfast each morning. However, it's so important for these kiddos to get some nutrition in the morning, whether that's at school or at home. Um, this will help them also be able to engage in the um, work day and the play day. So um, again, whether it's at school or home, please just make sure that your kiddo is getting, getting something to eat before they go to school. Um, Nurse Berta, how can parents help their child transition to kindergarten? We understand that this is a milestone event for both children and parents, and it can be both exciting and scary at the same time. So parents, your positivity will help your child better um, impact how they transition and their attendance. So your positivity about kindergarten is being a place for your kids to make friends, learn about new things, and they get to play. So encouraging those aspects of kindergarten for your child to make the transition easier is very helpful. Nurse Kathy, is there anything else that you'd like to share? I think that you all shared all the most important information, except for le two last things. Have a great Thanks summer! See you next we can't year. wait to meet you! <laughs> Incoming families are encouraged to complete a free and reduced priced meal application. Students who qualify for free or reduced priced meals also qualify for fee waivers, as well as free milk during milk break for kindergarten through fifth grade. Your meal status is effective for the school year and for the first 30 operating days of the following school year. Current school year applications must be completed annually. Applications are usually available by the first week of August and can be completed online through Skyward Family Access by selecting your student, click Food Service, click Applications. Be sure to click Submit once you have entered all the required information. Paper applications can be obtained from your school office. Applications can also be downloaded and printed by going to the district website. Click on Departments, Food Service, Free Reduced Meal Information. Only one application should be filled out per household. Families who qualify for free or reduced priced meals through direct certification will receive a letter from us and do not need to do anything further unless there is a problem with your letter, such as missing students that live in your household. If there is an issue with your direct certification letter, please contact the Food Service Office as soon as possible so we can review your account. If your application is denied, you can reapply at any time within the school year if you have a decrease in income or an increase in household members. The Stevens Point School District receives funds that are based on the number of students who receive free and reduced price school meals through the application or direct certification process. 
We encourage all families to apply for free and reduced price meals. If you have any questions regarding free and reduced price school meals, please email foodservices at pointschools.net or call 715-345-5435.